Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. So with regards to yesterday's video uh, that I did about Satoshi's identity, and um, there was this meeting, government meeting, um, with uh, home, uh, the Department for Homeland Security, and uh, this lady here, Saud, I forget her first name now, it escapes me at the moment, but uh, she was speaking, and uh, she basically said that the government basically knew that Satoshi wasn't one person, that it was a, a, a collaboration of four people that created Bitcoin. And now I'm just seeing this, guys, from Wheezy at Nerd Nation Unbox. Whoa, this blog about the identity of Satoshi goes along with what Saud said at that conference, NSA DHS. Tim Draper. So let me read you guys this identity. Many readers have asked who Satoshi is and I've made it clear that information wasn't shared with me. Based on my conversation, I got the impression, never confirmed though, that he might have been more than one person. This made me think that perhaps the Obama administration was right, that Bitcoin was created by a state actor. I never knew the Obama administration actually uh, suggested that at one point. One person commented on uh, this post that Satoshi was actually four people. Again, I have no idea. So uh, just another update here with regards to this. Got to thank uh, Wheezy at Nerd Nation Unbox. Great follow here if you guys aren't following him yet. Digital Asset by also pointing something out from the same conference, from that clip that I showed you guys yesterday. And if you guys didn't catch yesterday's video, I will link it up here in the top right hand corner for you. Um, here's something else. And now we know that the SEC was at that meeting as well. So in that video that I did yesterday, uh, I played a clip of that meeting. Apparently the SEC was there as well. This is proof the SEC knows and knew who Satoshi is and created policy, making it a commodity with this knowledge. Um, but in all seriousness, I think this was the best demonstration that I could come up with is how cryptocurrency works. This is not going to be a technical explanation. Maybe the guy from SEC. Martin, right? No? You don't want to do a technical explanation of Bitcoin or cryptocurrency or the blockchain? Um, I do want to say that both of these folks are, are government employees, SEC and uh, Homeland Security, so anything that I say certainly does not reflect upon them or their agency because I want them to keep their jobs and, you know, have wonderful careers. Okay, so they were there at the meeting, clearly uh, calling out Martin, who um, what is or was an employee at the SEC at the time of this conference. Wheezy also chiming in on this, uh, saying not only was Martin Zerwitz there, but Jane Norberg from the office of the whistleblower at the SEC. She left in April of 2021, four months after the lawsuit versus Ripple was filed. So a few uh, more indications here that some important people were in the room. Uh, she is now with Arnold and uh, Porter. Uh, so there you go, guys, some more uh, information and ever evolving story. I always like to keep you guys up to date on these types of things because sometimes, you know, it's not the end of the story, even if it is the end of the video. Anyways, guys, want to keep moving with regards to the crypto market. Um, we've got Bitcoin sliding slightly right now. It's trading at 19,500. Um, it's trying to hold that support. We're coming right back down after making a double bottom. So we are not actually moving our way up even further. Uh, this is an interesting level. This is going to be the level, uh, that many traders are paying attention to, to see what to do next. Some are suggesting and, uh, myself included, I think the market, I just feels right. I think the market's going to come down even further. And uh, I do even believe it could go down further than that at this point in time. So this is an ever evolving thing. And just watching this play out, you know, you got to look at it on different time frames and you got to kind of get a feel what's going on uh, at the macro level as well. Um, taking a look at this, I could see 80%, not out of the question. It's interesting that 80% does line up very, very nicely with um, the top that we saw back in June of 2019. Former resistance becomes new support. So um, I could see us go down even further. Bitcoin would be trading at 13,800. I don't know what that would mean for other altcoins like XRP. Uh, right now we got XRP trading just below 31 cents at 0 0.309. Um, but guys, institutional investors are getting ready for a big buying spree. This coming from XRP Crypto Wolf here. We know 2021 was the year that institutional investors fueled Bitcoin's run to almost $70,000. They name a few here, uh, some institutions like Paradigm, A16Z, and even Three Arrows Capital, according to the Mazzari report. Um, but the situation has changed now in 2022. In the report, Mazzari analysts and experts believe that institutions are coming back into the cryptocurrency industry, despite the low or non-existent profitability of some funds. 
The same scenario was observed back in 2018 when institutions made their first purchases when Bitcoin was trading at or below $10,000. So they're likening this to uh, 2018, guys, when we were in the depths of a bear market. In addition to the potential behavior of institutional investors, Mazari covered other topics like decoupling of uh, the cryptocurrency industry, the market's growth potential, and faith in alternative L1s. So they are actually seeing uh, institutional buyers coming back in the space. And, um, you know, even just the other day I was saying on-chain analytics does demonstrate that, uh, you know, at least one buying opportunity has occurred at the $20,000 mark. So that would have been investors' first opportunity to buy in. I guess they're waiting for the market to go lower. They're going to keep playing it by year. 80% again would bring Bitcoin back down to 13,800, give or take. So it's another key level that we are going to be paying attention to. The summer is going to be interesting, guys. It's great when you're invested in something with real world utility because you can keep getting excited uh you know based on not just prize because i know prize can be a bit contentious but based on partnerships seeing an evolution seeing more projects building on the xrpl for example ripple and xrp of course just being one project where we're continuing to see uh development uh we know there have been lots of uh lo lots of news have been coming out of the algorand foundation as well also v chain we've been getting some uh, recent v chain news too so you know some of these projects are still building Obviously, they are here for the long term. They're not just a flash in the pan. Uh, and here's the latest, guys. Ripple, we're excited to partner with Crosstower or the Crosstower NFT platform and integrate this NFT marketplace with the XRPL building Web3 in India and around the world. So the crypto trading platform Cross Tower has partnered with Ripple to add non-fungible tokens minted on the XRP ledger to its marketplace. Here are just some facts, guys. The partnership will significantly lower the costs and entry barrier for creators who want to mint their projects on the blockchain, Cross Tower said in a statement. Uh, they also uh, said uh, they've already, sorry, attracted projects like Antara and David Bowie World on its marketplace and has a pipeline of inaugural projects on the XRPL, the crypto trading platform said. The marketplace enables developers to quickly onboard NFT projects by giving them access to infrastructure including wallets, payments, and liquidity support. Uh, fans can purchase NFTs through credit cards and receive the assets through integrated wallets on the XRP ledger, according to a press release. So uh, just another project here, Cross Tower NFT, another NFT project looking to build on the XRPL and uh, have now integrated with the XRPL. So more value being driven to the XRPL. This is what we want to see. We want to see this, especially in a bear market, because this is how, I mean, I, I think in, in a lot of ways, this is a good indicator of how you can kind of differentiate between hype projects and not so hype projects, the projects that are actually looking to build, the guys that are still developing, the guys that still can afford to have developers developing in a bear market. That's the real McCoy, at least in my mind. You've also got companies going bankrupt, not being able to pay off their debts and uh, fleeing from authorities. Those projects are projects that you probably want to stay far away from. So uh, I'm glad to hear that this is happening on the XRP ledger. More value being added to the XRPL. We've also got this guy's rival to Jack Ma's ant seeks pre-IPO funding at $3 billion valuation. Now, this has to do with Ripple partner Lian Lian Digitech. They are in talks to raise as much as 1.5 billion yen. Sorry, not uh, billion, or not billion dollars, billion yen, which is the equivalent of about $223 million ahead of an initial public offering in Hong Kong as soon as next year, people familiar with the matter say. The Hangzhou-based startup is working with China International Capital Corp on the financing round, the people said, asking not to be identified as the information is private. Investment vehicles under the Zijiang uh, provincial government and the venture arm of China Mobile Limited have expressed interest in participating, one of the people said. The fundraising will likely take Lian Lian's valuation to about 20 billion won. So another Ripple partner uh, looking to add more to their coffers, $223 million USD. That's a big step. They are, uh, again, a rival to one of the biggest uh, companies over there in China, Jack Ma's Ant Group. And uh, they are Ripple enabled with Ripple Net Technology. So, you know, again, just another example of uh, more value being driven to the XRPL, at least through whatever uh, projects and partnerships Lian Lian has been developing over the years. So uh, just another example of that, guys. We've got some SEC news real quickly. James K. Filan posting this uh, just yesterday. Judge Torres has granted in part 
and denied, in part, parties' request to seal documents in connection with the Amakai motion to participate in the Dober proceedings. Is that pronounced Dober? Somebody tell me in the comments section. I know uh, probably one of the lawyers has pronounced this word. I think it's French, so Dober is how I would pronounce it. Proposed redactions are due by July 15th, which is uh, coming up soon, three days from now. So in part, they're looking to accept the request um, to seal some portions, but they are not granting that in full. So um, basically what that means is we are going to get to see some of it. Fred Rispoli down here responding, called it right, except for Torres ordering publication, even where parties agreed. Happy to be wrong on that. More transparency is always better. Only disappointment with the ruling is that I don't think a judge should base redactions on tweets without authentication. Could have been the SEC. Totally agree, said a dingo ate my XRP. At the same time, there's a good chance that even uh, if some of those are not authentic XRP holders, some of them are. This community is absolutely fantastic, but if you get enough people in a room, a few are likely to be total buttholes. I agree, yeah. I mean, not everybody is necessarily on the up and up. Um, I know that a lot of people have left the XRP community since the market downturn. Um, and you know, it's taken a while, but I feel like, you know, the pressure is on, this is where, this is kind of, it's, it's bittersweet. I got to say it's some of the most exciting moments in crypto can be now because, you know, great buying opportunities, finding good entry points. Um, but at the same time, sure, you don't have the hype and the hysteria and the high prices and looking at your portfolio and oh my god i'm gonna be a millionaire soon or whatever it is uh, that your goal is um but at the same time you know i feel like the realest people are usually still in the market today when the market's down the real fans right everybody's still following the news what's going on because this guys this is the time that we can kind of step away from price and you know look at the development look at the real value the real utility that is going to be driven to these projects and um really kind of comprehend the value and how much xrp is going to be worth one day the building blocks are already here and so you know entry levels entry um points this is at least what gets me excited in a bear market uh anyway not going to talk about that too much but um just kind of wanted to bring you guys this uh update with the sec the judge is letting us see some of these documents jeremy hogan also uh just mentioning this judge torres is not allowing the sec's experts opinions uh to be sealed just because they might inflame the public not only does she not allow the parties to keep relevant documents from the public as to this motion, she chills the SEC's pending motions to seal. It's a two for one for us guys. So this is positive news. Mike Manfield asking, this is a good outcome, right, Jeremy? Jeremy Hogan saying, yeah, it's a good outcome. Mindy here at Mindy Baines 11 or 111 here on Twitter asking, what does this even mean? I know sometimes the legal mumbo jumbo is a bit hard to understand. Jeremy Hogan just responding here. Sorry, it means we, the public, get to see the expert witness reports, except for a small portion of it that uh, somehow was directly related to the harassment sent the experts way. That's literally what all this stuff recently has been about. So we do get to see the reports, but um, there is a little bit, uh, a little portion of those reports that had to do with the harassment. I believe that is going to be under, um, uh, that's going to be sent or sent, not censored, redacted for whatever reason the judge sees fit. Uh, I know that John Deaton also came out and said um, something along the lines of, or just reiterating to the XRP community, guys, don't uh, contact any judges, don't contact any witnesses, don't contact any attorneys on either side, the defendants or the plaintiff's attorneys. Uh, this is only going to end badly. So just stay away. You know, watch from afar. We will engage on Twitter. We will engage through YouTube videos. We're all getting the most up-to-date information here anyway. The XRP community, always a very vibrant community, uh, you know, sharing everything and uh, making the space better. I think the SEC really does find us to be uh, a bit of a threat. Of course, you know, they've got something to hide. What are you hiding, Gary? Double A Best down here saying, you know, why are the SEC and Gary Gensler worried about inflaming the public they're supposed to be protecting? Their experts should be pointing exactly how Ripple is trying to harm us and what we need to be protected. And if we're inflamed, shouldn't they be listening to us? Exactly. I think they've got this all wrong. Anyway, uh, this is the latest update, guys. Judge has denied the motion for a full seal on this. And as I was saying earlier in the video, you know, price... I know it's it's a bit of a contentious point. I know it gets uh, very very people get very very touchy about it actually. <laughs> you know, we're assuming 
price is going to go to the moon, just based on the utility, based on a lot of things. How the F did we go from 589 to 37,500 and now $50,000? Well, guys, I recently did a video about um, the Jimmy Valley. He's the uh, the CEO from Val Hill Capital and his uh, explanation there, his theory um, was, was suggesting that Based on his uh, estimates, it could go as high as $50,000. Now, he did have some valid points. We also got to remember that we are now in a situation that is unlike any situation in the modern history, I'd say. I wouldn't say the history of uh, finance or the history of the economy, but in the context of the history of the modern economy, $50,000, um, you know, for, for an XRP, of course, is going to be dependent on a lot of things. Um, it does sound outlandish today, of course. Is it really outlandish? Is it just ridiculous, though? Um, so it's going to depend on a lot of things. And if you guys didn't catch that video I did yesterday or uh, the day before yesterday, I will link it up here in the top right-hand corner. Uh, and some people being critical, you know, love for the love of God, XRP isn't a sovereign currency. It doesn't need backing. It's pure utility. The value will depend on what liquidity is required at that time. Uh, so it'll fluctuate constantly throughout the day. Think outside of America. Think globally. Think new neutral. Hopefully everyone will wake up. Ant1 here saying, so that was from uh, Dictator Know-It-All. Ant1 here saying, you know, I find it crazy how people can't see these prices. Look at Bitcoin with no use case and then look at XRP, banks using it and a global bridge for all currencies. Now look back and think for one minute, how was Bitcoin even $50,000? Some would argue scarcity. Some would say, well, there's only 21 million Bitcoin and that's how it gets to these prices. Uh, William Large here saying, I think that number may happen if over 50% of XRP are in circulation and being used and the other 40-ish percent are being used as a store of value, perhaps. I always come on my channel and I say, look, here's what's being said. What is the possibility of this? Is it valid? Is it ridiculous? Let's talk about it. Some other people here chiming in, uh, a lot of people giving their opinion. And like I say, when price is mentioned, things get touchy. People feel like they have to walk on eggshells a little bit. Um, I don't care. I like taking it on and talking about how, why we could actually see something like this and theorizing about it. I mean, it might be complete hogwash and I'm the first to admit that, but is there an argument to suggest, I mean, it doesn't have to be 50,000, but to suggest an XRP in the, let's say four digits or even five digits, $10,000 per XRP. So ripple it in.nz here pointed this out. Interesting. We got to look at dilution of the value of XRP. Okay. And this is a good allegory. I thought relevant to issuers who create a token without bringing any liquidity with them. In other words, these tokens are issued at zero value and gain their value from you. Airdrops and rewards from these issuers are funded by you and your XRP. So here's the allegory. Dilution. The jug and glass represent the amount of liquidity. The contents inside represents the value. Okay, so here's liquidity value we got here in each token ecosystem. XRP liquidity. Add three tokens at zero cost to issue and no liquidity added by the issuer. The value comes from the XRP liquidity. XRP value has been diluted. So with no liquidity comes no value because there's no utility for these particular coins. Uh, kind of like today, you know, when we're seeing very, very low prices. Add another three tokens at zero cost to issue and no liquidity added by the issuer. The value comes from both the XRP, the liquidity, and uh, the other tokens liquidity. All tokens and XRP value is diluted. So with the more tokens that are uh, issued, um, with the same amount of liquidity, obviously that value becomes diluted. The only way to return the value back to XRP or to the tokens who have lost value is for the issuer to add new liquidity by buying up XRP, not by selling his tokens or returning the glasses to empty by putting it back into the XRP jug. Okay, so more liquidity, new liquidity is added or buy new money buying into XRP. So this is why guys, Brad Garlinghouse has said liquidity is so important. This is where we're going to have value added to the XRPL. That is not healthy though, as you want new money to be adding value, not replacing value. So an interesting allegory here, liquidity is really what is going to add value to the, um, not only to the XRPL, but to all our tokens that are going to be traversing over the XRPL, adding liquidity, focusing on, you know, for example, high value payments. That's just one application. Um, but this, this is also why we're kind of rooting for XRPL developers to create more use cases because the more use cases there are on the XRPL, the more value is going to be added. And so to the point that uh, Jimmy Valley was saying yesterday, he was reevaluating because 
At this point in time, the economy was looking very different or is looking very different than it was back when he made his original prediction in 2021. And echoing that sentiment, guys, is Quincy here. Now, for those of you guys who may not remember Quincy, he uh, showed up uh, about a year ago in the summer of 2021, uh, and he just kind of came on the scene. He's this dev young kid who knows his stuff, XDC Foundation developer uh, building dApps for the future of automation and finance. This is his Twitter profile, and uh, you guys can even see down here, back from September of last year, did it, guys. Thanks for all your support. I hope the future of adoption of crypto is a lot more clear for everyone now. Retweeting out Ripple X's tweet, diving into tokenization at Coin Club Quincy says that NFTs aren't just cute cat pics on the internet. They're unique digital objects that reside on a decentralized ledger to show ownership at different items. So um, apparently he did a talk here. I missed that, but uh, that was from back a few months ago now, September. Again, September last year. In the summer of last year, Quincy did a few videos on his YouTube channel explaining um, more about the technology, use cases, understanding the concept of the XRPL and other blockchain protocols. Let me remind you what he said, guys, about the XRP ledger. So anybody out there that's telling you they'll know where the price of XRP will go has no idea. Zero, zero, absolutely zero clue. But I'll give you a tiny hint of an idea of what could happen. So XRP is only it's a financial instrument of value and that instrument is basically the instrument's really liquidity between different other instruments like bonds stocks currencies all the, the everything basically yes. and the xrp is only worth the value of the things that are issued on it because it would cost xrp to buy those things on the network and use that liquidity mm -hmm. so what ends up happening here is not only do you have to issue all of the equity but you've also got to issue all of the debt so XRP is only bound by the fiscal uh, responsibility of the people that issue assets on it, which is obviously irresponsible. So XRP could be at $100, $100,000, a $1 million. It depends on how many assets you want to issue onto the network. So if you want to issue, you know, $100 trillion worth of uh, equity, cool. That's a lot of money on the network. What happens if they want to issue another $500 million worth of debt? That also adds value to the network. So there really is a mind blowing amount of wealth essentially that could basically be flowing through these networks that we can't even comprehend because of that debt question of being able to issue more and more and more value. So you essentially see what Quincy is saying here. The more uh, value that is issued on the XRPL, whether it is in the form of equity or debt, is just going to add more value to the XRPL. Therefore, XRP will need to be as high of a price as it needs to be in order to manage everything that is being put on the XRPL. So it's a mind-blowing amount. You can't, we can't even, as Quincy even said, who is a developer who does understand this kind of thing, it is such a mind-blowing amount that we can't even fathom how much is going to be facilitated on the XRPL in particular. This is why I get excited, guys, when I see new partnerships. This is why I say, you know, more utility being driven to the XRPL, the better it is. And this is why, with more liquidity, we will see more value for XRP. So I hope that sums it up. That's just my opinion, but I want to hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.